Alrighty, so I'm going to show you guys some of the creatures we have here right now. Um, in uh, this incubator here, I have a baby bunny that came in last night. So um, she's probably about 10 days old. She's a little baby cottontail. Um, and uh, her nest oh. was disturbed by a dog. That happens a lot. Um, so they weren't able to save her siblings, but they were able oh. to. I know, it's so sad. And those things happen sometimes, especially with oh. bunnies. So they weren't able um, to save the others, but she was. Did somebody bring her over, did yes, you say? Yes, oh. yeah. So it was about 9 o'clock oh. last night, actually. It was just um, last night. Just wow. last night. So this one's perfectly healthy, um, otherwise doing oh, really let me, well. I'll go take a close up for her in there. And you call this an incubator, yep, right? Yeah, this there is in? an incubator. So, so it's keeping her nice and warm that's and everything? That's right, yep. Could I put my hand in there to see how warm? Oh, well, so. Oh, okay. No, okay. Oh, easy, easy. They jump really. Easy. Oh, really? Oh, but look at it! But we got a good view crazy. over there, though. Yeah. So, uh, how long do you think you bunnies, will keep her here? Bunnies aren't a long commitment. It only takes them about three weeks uh, from the time they're born until they're old enough to be on their own. So, in rehabilitation, usually we keep them like another week or two. They just have to get to 150 grams. So right now this one's about 90 grams. Oh, I see. Uh, there's another one I received a few days ago that um, she's about 60 grams. Uh, and we'll be able to put these two together once this one catches up a little better. But but this is from a separate family? Separate maybe? family. Wow. So this and one. somebody else brought? Someone else brought this what one, right? Name? They look very similar, obviously, because yeah. they're both cottontails. But, cottontails. Um, right. And is he about 90 grams too? Or? This one's uh, smaller actually, that's why I didn't put them together. This one's 60 grams. So oh. This one went uh, a few days without mom. They weren't sure if the mom was coming back or not. So they put like a tic-tac-toe pattern with floss over the nest, which is something we tell people to do. Um, and they realized she wasn't coming back. And so they were able to save this one. And this is a, another lone survivor of this. Siblings with this one didn't make it. but. The nice thing about this is when we get enough together, we can bring a bunch of orphans together and they have siblings. They're not raised alone. Oh, nice. So. And then you release them out into the wild when exactly, they're yeah. 150 grams, you said approximately? 150 grams, yeah. Uh, so, and then they just go on their own, their own yeah. and they know how to survive Cotton instinctually? Yeah, as long as they, we don't raise them alone and then once they're weaned, we kind of let them be, we just give them food and water, but we don't touch or handle them at all. They oh. naturally become fearful. They right. naturally want to eat clover, grass, weeds, things like that. So um, it's pretty readily available for them. So there's no training or anything really necessary for them. Nice, wonderful. I hope they do so well when you release them. Oh, yeah. I love seeing them in my backyard. The, oh, yeah. the cottontails, I guess they're called. Right, right, yeah. yep, yep, that's right. They're adorable, they're super But cute. So you have another empty, um, Yep, this one's One uh, available right now. Incubator. And um, what's this thing there? Baby so worm. There's, there's a. This is another incubator. I have an oh. adult rabbit in here. I'm not gonna pull her oh. out. She just came in. Um, actually, about an hour before you got here. So oh, she really? was. Yeah, she was attacked by a cat. Um, oh. She had a lot oh. of lacerations. Um, oh really? Oh on my her. God, the yeah. poor thing. Yeah. So somebody brought her in as well. So yes, a, a woman just brought her in from Chumsford. Actually, she came from Chumsford. Yeah. Oh. So she was walking her dog, and the the bunny came over, and her dog kind of held it still, but her dog wasn't the one that injured it. But um, when she brought it here, and her and I were looking at it, it, it just had multiple lacerations. Oh. So it happens sometimes. A lot of times, um. Cats will get to them or oh, get hit by a car oh. or something. But otherwise, she's able to move uh, all of her limbs well, so that's good. Oh, so we just have to close up the wounds, get them clean, get her on some antibiotics, and yes. fingers crossed, we should be okay. I hope so. And could I ask, um, how many hours a week do you devote to this? Oh, gosh. Or, is it hard uh, to say? So luckily, I have volunteers. Oh, uh, oh. So for me, it's probably... It's probably at least 60 hours a week. It's, really? Oh um, my God. Very early in the morning. It takes four hours just to do the morning routines on everybody. Really? So some of four these animals, hours. yeah, they all their cages have to be clean. Everybody's gonna get medicated. Um, baby bunnies, these guys just open their eyes, but before their eyes open, they can't even urinate on their own. Like they have to have help. They'd be stimulated. So, really? Oh um, my yeah, God. Yeah. So they need a lot of a lot of hands-on attention. So you have 
one or more volunteers? So we have three volunteers uh, that come mm -hmm. here and help with the feedings. Another one, another one of them is, or one of them is a permitted uh, wildlife rehabber in Lowell. Oh. Um, and, but they have helped me for the past seven months. Uh, they have through the whole baby season. They're amazing, and they come here and they work for free, cleaning cages and that feeding is animals. Amazing. And they're wonderful. Are these young people or adults uh, or? I full mean, age ranges, actually. Age yeah, wow. yeah. Isn't that fantastic? And you devote oh, 60 hours a week, maybe? And yes. Uh, plus, you have children, did you say? Yes, I do. Yeah. I don't know how you do it's this. It's, it's crazy, it's but it's, I, I enjoy it, too, so it doesn't yeah. feel like work. Um, but uh, it's the first thing I do when I wake up and the last thing I do before I go to bed. Wow. So it definitely keep, keeps me busy, for sure. But yeah. we didn't talk about it before, but did you set up a foundation so that you could actually make a living from this if you don't already. That is, um, to get paid for all of your time that you put into this. We talked about that. We're trying to get a 501c, and, and when I had yeah. an attorney here, they were talking about trying to make it uh, paid at some point. Right now it's not. Um, oh. Hopefully one day it would be somewhat. Uh, I don't expect that I will make what I used to when I was doing general construction, but um, oh. but I think right now I'm, I'm just happy that it's not... It's not coming out of my pocket that yeah. we're caring for them, that the community is, is handling like all the, the funding for their needs. So yeah. right now, I'm, I'm really happy with that, and I think the sky is really the limit. You know? right. But I hope someday that you think about setting up some sort of charitable foundation or whatever so that you could get a full-time good pay for what you're doing. Oh, that would be wonderful. Because, for example, the, the head of the Red Cross for a charitable organization, I'm sure it gets... And I read, you know, gets over four hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh wow. wow! So, you know, all I'm saying is, you know, to get fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a year for all this hard work you're doing is not unreasonable. I think right. just to think about that right. someday, because so. you have young children, you said, right? Right, right. And yeah, a husband. and a very understanding husband. Luckily. Yeah, which is <laughs> so just something to right. think about someday, you know, because yeah. I think you deserve it for all that you're doing oh, here. If, nice. if they could get four hundred thousand. I think you could at least get a hundred thousand or <laughs> well, eighty or whatever. That'd be nice. But <laughs> so do you have two um, oh, so some have other chipmunks, chipmunks here, right? Here, yep. So the chipmunks, once they get to a certain age, they they're solitary animals, so I have to separate them at, at one point. Oh, are they solitary? Because so, uh, I get them on my deck. I feed the bird, bird. I feed them bird, bird seed. Yeah. But it's true. They not like they don't come in twos. They're just. They yeah. They're. Usually, I mean they're. I mean, they'll, they're okay with other chipmunks. They won't necessarily attack as long as uh, yes, that's what mind, I say. Mind their uh, their their space. These guys are a little bit younger. Um, they're kind of at the age now where they don't really want me handling them. Uh, oh, because they're getting older. They're getting a little bit older. So, but they're still they're still formula fed. So I, oh. I they they still will tolerate me coming in there. But I don't usually pick them up to feed them. I usually just give them the, oh. the syringe from inside the cage. Oh, I see. Without uh, picking them up. Yeah. So because you want them to get acclimated, not to humans, but exactly. To, not That's always, always be fed by humans. That's but, always the trick. So you yeah. you actually have to feed them, or your volunteers via. A feeding tube with a syringe. a syringe. Yeah, we have a special syringe oh. with a with a oh. tip on it. And then you have uh, looks like two over here, right? There's three in that cage. Yeah, they're always on. And they cage. they love that. What's that they, called? The they, Um. Well, some sort of exercise wheel, yeah, we'll say. Yeah. Look at them go. They're like a a gerbil. Or That's crazy. A, they just isn't that great? Wow. That thing. Yeah, they love it. It's funny because the multiple ones will get on at one time. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's two of them on it. Yeah, they love that. Thing. They're beautiful animals. I think the chipmunks. You they know? Are. I think they're their markings are cute. amazing. It's funny because we'll f we've learned that in the morning we have to give them their formula before we feed them because if we f give them food first, they'll stuff their cheeks so full, and then when we try to give them formula, they have to actually like spit out the food that's in their cheeks. It's, it's oh, I know. Oh, Every yeah. animal has their own unique little thing you know i see so. the uh, chipmunks filling their cheeks with my bird seed almost oh, every yeah. day they go right back to their den right? yeah and then they say they must have built up a nice store for the winter of the seeds oh, yeah. right oh because sure. they get they fill their cheeks then they run down the stairs yep. and hide them hide the seeds somewhere dens. yeah yeah <laughs> it's pretty awesome 
So here's you have some beautiful I call them cages here, right? Oh, yeah. oh look at this beautiful red squirrel or something. Yeah, so it's red squirrels in here. I have to be cautious because these guys will will run. Oh, they will. Oh, no, yeah, okay. they're red squirrels are very feisty. They're they're the redheads of nature, you know. And so um, it would she or he will bite you if, if um, possible. They yeah, these ones at this point I haven't tried to handle them. But oh. we feed them. We syringe feed them through the outside of the cage actually. Oh, I so see. yeah. Wow. Um, so they'll nice. approach us for for that, but they won't let us uh, they won't let us handle them, which is which is great. Um, yeah. They're definitely more feisty than gray squirrels, uh, so smaller what, than grays. But oh, well, what's the story with this red squirrel? So there's actually four of them in here. Four of them um, in there. Yeah, there's four. Wow. Oh. They're in their little den box here. Oh. Well, they might run if. Oh I... yeah, you could close <laughs> it if you want. Thank you. So yeah. there's four in there. You there's have a beautiful. Four, yeah. Did you build that den box? Um, you and your actually, husband? that was the uh, Chelmsford Girl Scouts. The Girl Scouts built those for us. Yeah. Look at uh, what a great job they oh, did they with did that. It came out well. beautifully. They made us a bunch of uh, den boxes for our squirrels and for our raccoons, and they're they're awesome. And the Boy Scouts also made us some as well. So, like I said, the community has taken care of us in so many ways. Like that these is animals. Fantastic. And they're not, I mean, these guys have everything that they could want. It's not like we're providing minimal care. Like, ev everything. They get amazing meals. They get these really nice yeah. den boxes, nice big enclosures. So, uh, they're really getting top-rate care. And it's because of the community. It really is. And you and your husband, and, which is wonderful. Yeah, yeah, a, <laughs> but yeah they, they probably would prefer to live the rest of their lives in there, I think, because they're getting the food and you know, safety with the shelter. But, you know, I think about that because a lot of people make that comment they're like oh they're not going to want to leave but also they get to a point where they're fine being in here once they get old enough you can tell they start to go stir crazy where they're really craving more stimulation and no matter how nice they make the cage it, it can't yes. compare to a huge oak tree or pine tree yeah. uh, these guys they love to run they love to jump like you see, I'm sure people see them going through the trees and, uh, yes. and there's yeah. that I can't I can't emulate, you know. Could, so. Did you say where they came from? Did you so say? So these guys came from a basement in Concord. Uh, there, something must have happened to their mother. They, the lady found them in her basement, and they were all thin, uh, oh. very dehydrated. Uh, so um, she wasn't really sure what to do with them, and I was just able to go down there and just just pick them up. They were in uh, they were pretty weak. Yeah. And how did she hear about you? Are you the close she, one of the closest wildlife rescues and? The whole area? Uh, no, oh, there's there's a bunch of us out there. I think people can go to mass.gov and find uh, uh, wildlife rehabbers. Also, I think under Google, we come up a lot of times if people are searching in this area. Um, and then word of mouth, Facebook too. Most people that find us know us from Facebook, from social media. Wonderful. So yeah. So you brought these squirrels in. How long ago was that? Did these you guys have been here for, I think, a month now. A month, uh, yeah. Yeah, they've... they've They've grown a lot, so they've probably got another week or so on formula, and then once they're fully weaned, they can start acclimating to the outdoors. And then you release them in a few weeks or a month or two? These guys are a little bit different because they're, they're cachet hoarders. Um, they're a little different than gray squirrels, and they, they tend to store everything they need like in one place for the winter. So oh. there's another rehabber that I spoke with who has a very large enclosure that they could actually stay in for the entire winter. Oh. So they're probably going to end up getting transferred to oh, her. Nice. It's great. There is a wonderful collaboration of rehabilitators in Massachusetts. There's actually three rehabilitators here in Chumsford. Um, really? Yeah, Mary Petrino. I'm sure a lot of people know Mary. She's, oh, I uh, thought she's she was on... yeah, with you, too. Oh, yeah. So we all we oh. all work together. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I'm actually babysitting one of her skunks. I'll show you in a little oh, bit. Oh, really? So, wow. Yeah, it's, it's super cute. Uh, but we all work and collaborate. So, oh. like, if I find skunks, Mary's, the, Mary's got a lot more experience than I do with skunks, so they would go to her. Like, for example, we got a call in Chumsford about a skunk that was stuck to a rat trap. Like, the, the rat trap um, was around its head, I think. Oh. And um, and I called Mary, and we went together. And yeah. Mary has so much more experience than I do with skunks. Oh. And so I was with another volunteer of mine, and I was trying to make a game plan. I was like, okay, you stand there, I stand here, because we're all terrified of getting sprayed. And uh, I'm making this game plan, and Mary, who's been doing it, Ever just walks up to the skunk with a with a carrier and just 
whoop, just scoops it right up. It didn't spray or anything. Wow. I, I, That's I amazing. was amazed. Yeah, but <laughs> she just, this woman's been doing it way longer than I have. She's got so much yeah. more experience. And the neighbors were thrilled we were able to help the skunk without, you know, it spraying the, the neighborhood. So, um, yeah. It's great to work with different people and pull from different experiences for the betterment of the animals. Yes, wonderful. Well, well I'm looking forward to seeing that skunk pretty yeah, soon. Uh, and how about in this next cage? So what do we have in here? Gray squirrels in here. Oh, gray uh, squirrels. Yeah. yeah, so they're all kind of sleeping. But they're a little oh, oh, there it comes. Go, come here. So this one I've had since it was a pinky, which is like when it's still... Oh. Pretty much see through. There's no no fur on it. That's why he um, trusts you, so you could hold him like right. that. Right. So this one's still formula fed, so it's it's not afraid of oh. me just yet. These He's guys. Not afraid. That's great. I like that. Yeah, it's. And it's, he doesn't bite you, which is no, nice. No, no, yeah, but they once this one gets to an outdoor enclosure, they definitely they wild up. They won't let me anywhere near them. But oh right really? Now, oh, I see. So getting bigger and then put it in the bigger enclosure outdoors. If you do it at the right time, yeah. Then they won't do what they're doing. He's doing now. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So and that's important because I don't want to release them and have them approaching people and freaking people out. Oh. Um, oh. So it is very important um, that they learn fear of people uh, over time, but. Yeah, oh, this yes. one's known me for, for oh, quite some time. So wow. she's like, and wait, or he, he's like, it's time. Oh, look at that. How long have you had him? That's so cute. Uh, so he's so this cute. one, it's been seven, eight weeks we've had this one. Seven, eight weeks, wow. So when they, you know, and I've had people call me about pinky squirrels before, like, how do you not have room for pinky squirrels? They're so tiny, but a pinky squirrel is oh. way, a tiny newborn squirrel is way more work than one this age. They have to be oh. fed every two hours what? over the night. So you You're have to kidding. Be every two hours overnight. And, um, and you it's did exhausting. that? It's um, exhausting. You and your with, volunteers did that? Yes. And, um, that is and amazing. Yeah. So we can only take on so many of those yes. before you're like, I just, I have to get some sleep, you know? Wow. So, um, <laughs> every was, two hours. That is amazing. Yeah. We have this one I posted about that this one came from Chumpsford. Um, oh. He had. He came from St. Joseph's Cemetery. Um, uh, there's oh. a gentleman that works there that's, uh, that's a big supporter for us, and he found this little guy. Oh. Uh, so we treated him for mange. He's been cured of mange. It's going to take a little while for all of his fur to grow back. But uh, he nice. had a, a really large load of parasites. Uh, it's oh, really? Coccidia. Oh. Yeah, so we, uh, we have the ability to test their their feces for parasites which is really important because oh. um this little guy was just riddled with them and uh, oh. uh, essentially just being eaten alive he had them on his skin he had them in his intestines so we cleared him up and once he wasn't contagious anymore he he got somebody so it's nice because none of these oh look at them <laughs> are they playing with each other they do just... none of them are oh, related nice. but they're young enough that they uh they still cuddle up, and it's oh, important nice. for them because they bond with each other and not us. That's why it's really important not to ever raise a single. Because some people think, oh, I found a single baby, I can raise it and release it. But you really can't because a baby squirrel that was raised with people won't even actually move like a regular squirrel. Like they, you know how regular squirrels move really quickly? I've, I've seen it firsthand. Like they just, they don't know they're a squirrel. They don't move quickly like a squirrel. They're not very alert to what's going around. Oh. So it's very important. Also, if you've ever seen them, any animal when they get next to, when they're a baby and they get next to one of their own kind, they're just so much happier. They yes. just, they just love Oh, love isn't that one? Buddies. So you release those guys in a month or two or whatever. So, yeah. So those guys, will, actually, these guys will probably stay with us for the winter. I'm going to oh, see, see. kind of how quickly it gets cold. Um, and uh, it, it just depends on when they're big enough. But they, they're my youngest group of greys right now. Oh, I Nice. Well, they, they look nice and happy and healthy. Oh, yeah, they're... Oh, we got this big... It's like a big dog carrier yeah, so down there. Yeah, this is where Mary's skunk is that we're babysitting. Let's see if I can get her out. So she's got a little cold. Um, Aren't you worried about getting sprayed? So this one... Um, so it, as long as you keep their tails tucked under them, they can't oh, spray. Oh, good idea. But yeah. also when they're younger, they're not as afraid. Afraid. They're not as apt to spray. When they're older, they're just absolutely terrified by people. They know they're not supposed oh, to be around oh. people. This one, uh, very late bloomer. It's it's very uncommon for them to be this young at this time of year. Oh. Um, so 
Mary got it because it had some uh, difficulty breathing, uh, and so she took it to Tufts, and they've been treating it with antibiotics, and we're treating it now while it's here um, in our care. But um, so, but otherwise, it's doing great. It's got a great appetite. It's been eating what? and drinking very well. And how much longer are you going to keep um, him or her around? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mary may have to overwinter this one. Oh. She would know better than me. Uh, I wouldn't know what to. I don't know that one that this one could be released this late in the season. Oh. Um, so I imagine it's going to be an overwinter. But that's it's, amazing. I had no idea you had a skunk in here, which is good because then the the scent wasn't uh, prominent. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, and you have a beautiful cage over there. Did you build that one? Uh, no, we actually this was on our Amazon list, and one of our uh, one of our followers purchased it for us. Uh, and this is another. That's a beautiful. I love it. Yeah. And what's it on Amazon? What's it called? The cage for what's. What's in there now? Oh, it's for yeah, it's for for a chipmunk right now. There's one uh, in there on the wheel. You can always be found on those wheels. Oh yeah, nice. So there's a chipmunk in there now. We can't can't see him too well, but there he is. There. <laughs> This is a beautiful enclosure. What does yeah. that go for? Like a hundred dollars? Yeah, or it was more? only it was about a hundred bucks. It had to be put together, but um, wow, that's but, yeah, great though. I you really could, like if you have a hundred dollars, you could do. It. Now I imagine just there may be a question for people. What if they want to make a pet of, say, a chipmunk or something? They shouldn't do that, right? No, it's illegal. Oh, uh, it's illegal. Actually, yeah, <laughs> like legally you can't do it, but also they're definitely they're wild animals, and I think when you get them as babies. I can see why people would think they would make good pets, but once these animals become sexually mature, it's very evident that they're they're wild. Like raccoons are adorable; they're super cute. People follow our page and they see, and they really are. But once they reach like a year, like they definitely they can be more aggressive. Um, also, all these animals, all of them can carry different parasites and different diseases, and it's important to you know. To, to know what those things are, to, like with raccoons, they carry a type of roundworm that can only be killed with fire. Like you literally can't just like bleach the cage afterwards. And um, that roundworm, though they can function with it, can cause uh, can cause death in people, uh, other animals. So it's yeah. So I've received raccoons, and people have been like, "Oh, we found it. It's been in bed with my son, who's been cuddling it. My dog's been playing with it, and it's." Oh. Exactly. I'm thinking, no, oh, you know? Yes. Well, I don't want people to think of them only as rabies vector species because it's actually not common for raccoons to have rabies. So, you know, uh, we really want to let people know that they are animals with feelings and they're, they're really interesting and they're creatures that should be respected, but at the same point in time, I don't want to make people feel like these would be great pets and that you should approach any raccoon that you see. Uh, because there are things to consider. There are diseases and things like that. So. I see. Thank you, Jane. So why don't we go outside next sure, to look okay. at your beautiful cages out All there right. and the animals out there.